Hi everyone! In this video I will present my Mac Pro case conversion to host PC components. It was done mainly with 3D printing and I think it's one of the cleanest conversions out there because it requires minimal cuts. Why modding this particular case? First, because it's a solid all metal case with a lot of space and very well designed air cooling. Second, it is cheap. I bought a working Mac Pro 2.1 from 2006 for less than 50 euro. Finally, what better case for a Hackintosh project? For me it is also a design object. I totally like how it works on my desk. So in this video we won't be speaking about removing the original hardware from the case or for rearranging the standoffs for a Micro ATX motherboard um, or how to get the front panel working. All these topics are covered in Tony Mac X86 forums, which is my primary source for everything Hackintosh. Here I will present mainly the 3D printed parts I designed, how to mount them, and uh, I will publish also the STL files in case you start such a project. For the back I installed two printed parts, one for the power inlet and one for the rear panel. The cut for the rear panel is the only cut on the external side of the case. Basically, I designed a part that clips into the case and fills the gap between the case wall and the I.O. panel of the motherboard. All parts for the mod were printed with ESA, a strong UV and temperature resistant material. I am quite happy how the rear panel works. There are commercial adapters for this case that look less integrated than the printed one. Here you see it from the inside. The power inlet 3D printed part is hosting the power socket from the original PSU. The part is then installed from the external side into the original hole for the power socket. It could be screwed to the perforated sheet of the case. The purpose of this part is to install the power socket outside of the case and save space inside. This allows to move the PSU as close as possible to the back, which in turn increases the clearance between the front of the PSU and the steel grid. This clearance then allows to pass the PSU cables to the main compartment through a small cut in the shelf. I cut the shelf without taking it out. In order to save space I had to build my own power plug for the PSU 
because the standard one requires at least 2.5 cm of space. I used some power cables and a connector from the original Mac Pro. I built a similar cable and connector for the external power inlet. The connectors allow to disconnect and take out the PSU if needed. The PSU itself wasn't modified in any way. It was just fixed to the bottom plate of the original PSU, which is then screwed to the shelf. These modifications are enough if you want to have a nearly stock looking converted Mac Pro case. Again, check the Tony Mac X86 forums for how to get the front panel working. I also use the powerful original fans that could be controlled from the PC motherboard but need to switch two of the connector wires. All this is in the forums. For my conversion project I wanted to add also a Blu-ray player and more USB 3 ports in the front. I wanted also a second 7 inch screen for media playback or for control display in Windows. The Blu-ray was easy because I had one on an older PC. For the USB 3 I had to design and print a mount. In the same mount goes a female to male HDMI cable for the secondary screen. There are links in the video description to the components I used. I had to take out a lot of material from the CD lid with a file in order to get it through the CD door of the case. The installation is straightforward. Once modded, this case is very convenient for cleaning and maintaining the PC because access is easy to all components. Here you see how goes the HDMI cable to the GPU. I have to think about a more clever way to open the front panel door from outside. It isn't very important though because I'll have the case displayed just in front. For the case display uh, I bought the 7 inch touchscreen from Evisif. The big advantage of this display is the wiring can be completely hidden because it has HDMI and USB headers on the back. I found an existing 3D printable panel for this display on Thingiverse that I slightly modified. I added two holes for plastic inserts, access to display buttons, and leads for small magnets. So 
there are two magnets in the panel and two magnets are fixed on the case with epoxy. This way the case display can be installed or removed easily. Probably a better option here would be to integrate two larger rectangular magnets, but I am full of these small 6x3 mm magnets from my Voron projects, so I use them. That seems all from me on this project. I'll publish soon the STL files either in the video description or on Thingiverse. Thanks for watching.